Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another I Work in Sport live interview. Uh, That's the show where we bring uh, accomplished sport business professionals uh, to come here and share their knowledge, experience, tips, and advice in order to help you succeed in your career. Right today, we do have a super special guest. Uh, Misha Sher uh, is with you, uh, with us, actually, with all of us uh, here just in the background. Um, just uh, to let you know, if, if it's your first time here, uh, my name is Juan Fugerio. I'm the founder of I Work in Sport. We started as an events company doing uh, the first international, uh, the truly international uh, job fair focused uh, in the sport business. Uh, we now evolved and are doing events uh, digitally as well. We're going to be bringing some... Uh, news uh, to you next week about our second edition of the Education Expo, Education Virtual Expo, so stay tuned for, for it. In fact, actually, if you want to have news uh, from us, I just uh, recommend, would uh, appreciate if you could follow us in our social media channels, pretty much everywhere at um, I Work in Sport, or of course, at um, our website, iworkinsport.com. Um, right. Uh, also, let us know where you're uh, connecting from. We like to do this interactive as we always do. Uh, it's great to have um, you guys uh, uh, with us, normally from all over the world. So don't be shy, say hi, and we're going to engage in a conversation uh, with Misha. Just before I bring Misha in, let me give you um, a brief introduction about him. He's uh, been working in sports industry for over 15 years, uh, not only with sponsorship uh, and brands, but also in, with events and in other areas. He has represented uh, interests of global sporting icons, such as Pelé, the biggest uh, of them all, the real GOAT, uh, and also advised the brands uh, such as Coca-Cola, American Airlines, uh, Sony, Allianz, Toyota, Liverpool FC and, and really many others. Uh, his uh, a cool thing we're going to talk about is that he's been at the forefront of uh, WPP's involvement with esports, right? He's been advising several clients on investment strategy as well as working with uh, a league operator called Gfinity and um, David Beckham's uh, backed Guild Esports who is in the middle of an IPO process in, at the London uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, at the pre-IPO, they already raised uh, two million pounds. That's uh, exciting. We're going to talk about that with uh, Misha. And he's also a published author. Actually, there's links for his book there in the description. Check that out. Uh, we're going to talk about that as well. He's a lecturer at uh, leading MBA programs. Uh, his, and is regularly featured in um, also leading uh, media outlets such as the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, BBC, CNN, Fortune, and others. Can't uh, do much better than that, I think. So let me get uh, Misha in. Hello, Misha. How are you? Hello, Zhao. How are you? Good to be with I'm you. Very well, man. Very well. Excited to, to have you uh, here with us. Um, really really great just before we start as i said we normally have people uh, connecting from uh, everywhere uh, let me just shout out to uh, barnabas here in london well right next to emily stadium right. uh, there is amrita in uh, germany jimmy uh, is in zurich um, here fran from dublin and uh, well, there's someone that I cannot identify, but is in Lagos, Nigeria. 
Oh, so nice. really, wow. yeah, all, all, all over the place. Great to have all of you uh, with us, and super excited to start a conversation here with um, with Misha. So Misha, this is a um, show focused in career, in career and sport. We're going to talk a lot about your career, get a bit of your advice to whoever is uh, watching. But you are the global vice president for sports and entertainment at Mediacom, part of the WPP group. Uh, people normally when they, they're looking to sports, even when they go to, to masters and do courses in sports, they're very focused in clubs, federations. They will know some agencies uh, that uh, operate heavily in sports, such as IMG in front or team marketing, some of those, but they may not be that familiar with um, Mediacom. So before we start, you know, talking about you, please uh, no, tell us our audience about uh, Mediacom and, and WPP. Sure. So um, WPP um, is, is, a, is a major, I suppose, uh, media, creative, um, digital uh, network. I mean, you're talking about 100 and probably 130,000 employees, uh, you know, some of the most well-known creative agencies like Ogilvy and Gray, uh, VML, uh, JWT, media agencies like Mediacom, uh, that people would know, Mindshare. Um, so it's a big, it, yes, traditionally it's not known to be uh, in sport, but definitely in the, in the marketing communications world, it's a, it's a very big, uh, it's a very big um, and, and powerful network. Uh, Mediacom is is the one of the biggest media agencies in the world, and what you know it, the core business is is investing in media and communications on behalf of some of the biggest clients, right? So it's Coca Cola, or uh, Procter and Gamble, uh, Shell, Allianz clients, <clears throat> Adidas clients like that. Our job, our core business, is all about effect spending or investing, sorry, investing um, the client's money in the right way and the right platforms so that they can connect with them, whether it's TV or radio or out of home or digital and so on. Our business, Mediacom Sport and Entertainment, is an, is an extension of our, of our core business. And what it means is once we, once we understand what the client is trying to do, the audience they're trying to reach, the behavior they're trying to trigger, we use... Uh, sport and entertainment, so uh, basically culture, um, as a way to, um, you know, as a way to connect with them. So that could be music or film or sport or gaming or original entertainment. It could be a number. It could be a number of, of ways that, uh, that you can do that. And, right. and you know, sports marketing is not doesn't exist in isolation. So um, it's a it's a it's a similar type business to what you would expect from a traditional sports marketing agency, but, um, but it's, it's a bit broader than that. Cool. Um, so now explain then to us your role there as a vice president of a global and sponsorship. I know that uh, never there's a one day just like the other. Uh, it's, uh, you have a very exciting job very, doing many different things. But uh, try to paint as a picture of what is a normal day of work um, for you. God, what is a normal day these days? I mean, <laughs> um, I mean, normally I wake, you know, the, the very first thing I do every every morning for an hour is I um, is I, I put I put some time aside to read. Um, I'm, I need to be um, <clears throat> I need to be in the know on what's happening in our industry. I read reports. Um, I'm looking at some of the latest trends just 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 to understand what what's happening, what's affecting our business, what's affecting the industry that in which we're. Uh, um, in which in which we're operating, um, but but in terms of the day in terms of the day to day uh, in, in terms of the day to day work, a lot of it is around how we grow our business. Um, what, what's the you know what are some of the what are some of the uh, some of the agency clients perhaps that we're not working with uh, where there might be an opportunity for us to deploy our capabilities. Um, how do we deliver and grow our existing business? So we might we may already be servicing the likes of Toyota or Uber or others, and how do we how do we grow our capabilities in that space? Um, but over and above that, that's more sort of day to day. My job is to look at how do we actually grow the business. 
how do we grow our capabilities and how do we scale those capabilities around the world? So, for example, at the moment, uh, the big focus for us is, is how we take everything that we've done in, in North America, in, in, uh, in the UK, in Australia, and, and launch it in China. So lot China is a big priority market for us. So how do we how do we launch sport and entertainment? Separate from that, we're looking at how to how we diversify our business given given uh, various changes and and um, <clears throat> that are happening in our industry. What what are the, what are the other types of services that we can that we can develop um, and deliver from from the position of strength? So we're looking we're looking at that now as well. How do we evolve as a business? How do we develop new revenue streams? How do we ultimately um, package that up and scale that in different markets in which we operate? That's great. That's great. Thanks. Um, that gives um, everyone, I think, a good sense of that. I want to talk about your career. Just before we, we do that, we always try to engage with people um, uh, that are connecting with us. So, uh, Sigdem from London, uh, best wishes to all. Uh, uh, another one from, from Zurich, Tugrul is from Zurich, Bettina Cornwell uh, from, from joining from Oregon. We're, we're looking oh, forward wow, to amazing. It's great. We're looking forward to speaking to you uh, very soon. So we'll be connecting. Thank you for, uh, for connecting there. Uh, there's uh, Guilherme Casanova in Geneva, Alessio Pietra uh, here in Bern. There is uh, Luis Felipe in, in Rio de Janeiro, um, Maria in Austria. There's someone saying hi to, 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 to you, Misha. Maybe you know Janos. Uh, nice, yes. Hi, hello. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carol from, from, from Brazil. Uh, Mame Paulo. Oh, this, this is my mom, Misha, saying hi. Oh, so, hello. Love you, mom. <laughs> hello, Joe's so, mom. <laughs> yeah, Ricardo, thank you. So not not everyone here is uh, really interested in sports. Some are just supporting family. But um, actually, let me also ask to, to people watching if you can just uh, make a note um, or, or let us know if you already work in sports or are here because you want to work in sports and specifically uh, with sponsorship. We'll be interested in, in, in knowing that as well. But um, Misha... How did you start then your career in sport? I know that you have a very cool story. We have a super nice picture prepared here to, to, sh to share with everyone. But uh, yeah, yeah. Are you going to share it? <laughs> and uh, uh, let's take some, some time to tell how you started. And, and also, if you can, in the process, also already share some tips, you know, some advice for people that are looking to to start in that career as well. That would be super cool. Yeah, look, um, I used Did we disconnect? Oh, there you go. You're back. Apologies, I lost you there for a second. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, yes. Connection is not sure. great though. Yeah, may, maybe try oh, to log out and uh, log, log back in. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, okay, very good. Sorry, everyone, that's a live stream. Uh, this, these things happen. These things happen, I apologize. Um, so, yeah, I mean... I, may, may, I look, maybe if you disconnect and connect again, Misha. Can I? Okay, no problem. So, while we're at it... Um, Leave your comments there. Let me know if you work in sport already or um, or just uh, wants to work in sport. And if you specifically uh, are interested in sponsorship, I see that some of you already know Misha. There we are. Leave, leave the comments there. Yes, you're yeah. back. We can see okay. you very well now. Apologies for that. No, no worries. This, this kind of things happen on CNN and, you know. <laughs> Uh, so why not here? Yeah. So um, Let, let's go back to your career. Yeah. So I, look, I, originally I um, I played sport very competitively. So my love for sport has been there with me since I was, you know, since I was three years old. I grew up playing football. So it's um, 
I've always loved being around sport and I've been very fortunate to, to have competed at a, at, a, at a pretty high level growing up. But, um, but originally, uh, <clears throat> after a short stint in, in, in professional football, I ended up going into, into banking, which wasn't really for me. I spent five years doing that and decided at that point that I wanted to get into sports. I wanted to work in sport. And I thought the best way for me to do that was through doing, through doing a master's program in, um, in Liverpool. At the time, there weren't that many programs, particularly in football. I mean, clearly, you, you know, uh, other than FIFA Masters, I think Liverpool might have been the only program around. There's, there are clearly many more now. Um, but I ended up going to the, to the um, Football Industries MBA in Liverpool, had an incredible time there. It was a, it was a real eye-opener for me in terms of learning about the industry seeing incredible guest speakers and most importantly it was the network that i was able to build in that time um that really gave me an opportunity to crack the door open and 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 get a you know at the time get a great opportunity at i started out at um, at suckrex again a, a, an events originally an events business and a great opportunity for me to to meet people and to get to know the all the different uh, stakeholders that shaped the industry. So it was a, it was a real, um, a really interesting time and, and very useful for my career. I then went to, um, I went I mean, to that's Rangers. That's where we first met yeah. when we were at, uh, That's Soccer. right. That's where we met. Yes, correct. They, they, um, they do have, um, a great uh, alumni there from your, your generation that are doing super well now. Yeah. You yeah. It's both, a great, it's a great breeding both, ground. Uh, yeah. Both bands. Yeah. It's a great place to, if you think about what it is, I mean, it, it, the, the aim, I mean, I, I, under, I, I understand it's a, at the core, it's an events business, but ultimately it's a place where all the, um, all the movement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nisha, I think uh, some, someone connected to your, uh, Nisha. Uh oh. This has never happened before. I think. Can you hear me? We can hear baby talking on your phone. I think uh, someone took over your, um, your Bluetooth or something. Never mind. Do you have one? This, this is crazy today. I would think maybe this connect and connect again. Wait, I'm gonna give uh, Nisha a call. Very sorry for you guys watching there. Th that's the first. Bettina, don't. <laughs> that has never happened before. I'm I'm saying Bettina because uh, she's invited to come to come uh, speak with us uh, in the coming weeks. Nisha, can't hear you. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. There we are. Your your sound suddenly I I think someone connected to your Bluetooth or internet and we were hearing babies uh, talking. Oh I really? I, I, I I'm not sure what no I'm not sure what happened there. Apologies for that. <laughs> okay okay well apologies to 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 everyone uh, at home. But uh, you were just uh, saying about your time at uh, Soccer X, and then maybe sharing some advice to people that are looking to enter the the sport industry. Yeah, look, uh, SuckerX was a SuckerX was a great place to start. I got to learn a lot. Um, I met a lot of people there. Um, it was a great place to network. And look, through my experience, not just at SuckerX, but I think in in through throughout the last fifteen years, I guess the the advice I would give and what I've learned is, you know, if you want to get anywhere, you've got to um, you know you've got to be prepared to hustle. I hustled a lot. I hustled a lot on my when I was doing it before I got to Soccer X and I hustled a lot when I was there, um, I would, um, I would give without, without expectations. I think that's really important. You build, you build uh, really strong relationships that way. Um, network, network, network. I uh, can't stress that enough. It's who it's, it's all about who, you know, as you progress through the industry, um, 
never stop learning, uh, perhaps, and uh, and find a mentor. I think having a strong mentor that um, who can who is not your friend or a parent, but someone in the industry that you that you know and respect, and who can give you who can guide you um, and give you give you honest feedback along the way, I think is really important. I've been very fortunate to have had very good uh, very good mentors, and I'd recommend that you find that everyone who is watching finds a mentor as well. No, that's that's super cool. I'm going to ask you. You can think about it about the the highlights of, of your career, uh, except from the blooper here that uh, Mario Medeiro said that was a funny one, but not a problem. Great guess. Thank you, thank you, Mario. Um, Bettina, of course, is um, explaining that she, um, she teaches at the University of Oregon. Um, Janusz uh, Fimba forever. So yeah, people right. from yeah. Liverpool are, are, are watching, but but not only uh, from Liverpool. Mario Didier, yes, Charles uh, is now doing the sports management um, program in Coventry. All all great uh, programs. And uh, Maria played soccer in Florida, and I'm doing oh, a master's at yeah. UCSB. Oh, so so she saw you last week. Well, look, I'm, yeah, now, now, now I'm repeating myself. So sorry, Maria. Well, no, yeah. thanks for joining, Maria. Yeah, so thank you. what would you say was uh, then the highlights of your career the, all these years, uh, Misha? Do you know what? I think the, <clears throat> I think above all else, I, I feel really, really fortunate that the, the, my career in sport has given me the opportunity to meet some incredible people and I got to see the world. I think, be, you know, be, uh, above all else, that's been the biggest. That that's been the best. Uh, you know, that's that's been the best for me. But you know, if we're talking about if we're talking about real sort of career highlights, I mean, working with Pele, it was it was incredible. I, I'm I'm not sure anything uh, can really top that. <clears throat> I, check, I, out, I, check out check out that picture, Amisha. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah. Well, that's the journey. So. Um, so yeah, working with Pele was was uh, was incredible to to spend time with this with this, such a. I mean, not only was he an, an, an incredible player, but he was an, he's an, an amazing human being. So uh, meeting him, working with him is is, is absolutely and having it be a family friend is a is a obviously a highlight. Um, I think another, <clears throat> I think being on a Ken Lyons jury and writing a book with my with my fellow jurors was 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 definitely up there. And it's an incredible experience. I, I'm uh, hugely rewarding spending spending a week with some of the most fascinating people. Learned a lot, um, you know. And then being able to write a book, it's let it's opened up all sorts of opportunities for me. Um, and I think creating, look, and creating an award-winning business at Mediacom has also been hugely rewarding. I mean, when we started out, we no one really knew who we were or what we were. And for us to, um, you know, to to produce award-winning work, to scale our business across the, across the world, um, that's definitely been hugely rewarding. So I would say that's probably the that's probably the biggest highlights. So you, you you mentioned uh, your book. Tell us a little more about that. And and I heard there's a second one in the making. That yes. one that was a sort of a collaboration that um, that you did. Um, is that correct? Is the yes, yeah. So I was uh, I was very fortunate that a few years ago I got to be on a Ken Lyons jury. Now Ken Lyons is the sort of the Oscars of the of the marketing and advertising industry. It's it's where the best best work, sports marketing included um gets uh, gets awarded so i had the opportunity to spend and debate some of the best some of the best work in the world with people who are running creative agencies and pr and and production and talent learn you know learn a great deal and we thought um why don't it's never been um it's never been done no no jury has ever written a book even though there's so much <clears throat> uh there's so much mystique around can and what goes on in those rooms and the discussions that take place. And we thought, you know, why this could be, um, this is an amazing opportunity for us to actually explain of, <clears throat> to the world, basically to, to our industry, what great looks like, why we thought something is amazing and why, why we thought something else might've been average because at the end of the day, we're all trying to, I'd like to think that we're all trying to be, 
uh, better at what we do and we're trying to excel. So that was an opportunity for us to um, to give something back to the industry. Um, so we you know we got together and we collaborated on this book and and ended up ended up doing really well. We donated all the proceeds. So yeah, it's an incredible experience. I, and I the, art, the art of branded content. Yeah, it's about. I mean, it's it's you look. I think it's it's important that we don't look at sponsorship in a silo like it exists on its own. I think at the end of the day, what we're saying is the book is all about how do you, how do we compete for people's time? What does it take to create something that competes for people's time? That includes sponsorship, right? So you know, they if you are in sports marketing and sponsorship, ultimately what you're doing is you're trying to get. Uh, you're trying to engage with people. So how do you do that with everything else that we're poor, we're time poor these days. There's so much, there, there's, there's so many, uh, there's so many things competing for our attention. So the book is all about how do you create amazing, um, amazing work that earns people's time without interrupting them. That's great. And, and you said that you'd be happy to to give one to, to the I audience be, today. Yes, it would be my pleasure. So that this is you know this is the book, right here, um, and I would be happy to give you know to um, to give a copy of this. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna have uh, questions from the audience. So if you want to send your questions to to Misha, Misha, I, I'm actually gonna ask you at the end to choose one. Sure. Okay. Sure. Right. And uh, don't be shy as well. If you can uh, hit the hit the like button and show the appreciation to me and to and to um, and to I work in sport, that would be super cool too. Uh, Misha, times of COVID, lots of sort of changed, and there's a lot happening in the sponsorship space. Uh, yeah, I think there are so so many lessons learned uh, during this period. What were the biggest uh, learnings um, in your perspective? Um, I think we, I mean, to be honest, I think we've been, it's been a difficult year. Uh, clearly it's been a difficult year for everybody, but um, you know, it's, I think one of the, one of the biggest lessons we learned is that you have to be, you've got to be agile. Um, you've got to, you've got to be able to react. You've got to understand very quickly what, what your clients need and and really uh, your current clients need and actually where where does where does the value proposition from your business sit going forward so when we come out of this and when we as we're starting to emerge what does your business need to look like to still be fit for purpose and to feel and to still provide value um you know for the clients that we're that <clears throat> that we're servicing and i think what you know in the absence of sport um, what um, you know? What what's happened to us is we we've obviously leaned into some other some other genres of culture. So when we talk about sponsorship, we looked into gaming, for example. That's clearly been an area of uh, again of when we look at culture that has um, you know that that's that's been growing and has been has been accelerated as a result of as a result of COVID. And you you mentioned in the beginning, David Beckham's uh, you know David Beckham's new franchise. I mean, we're talking about. We're talking to a franchise that didn't really exist a year ago, and now it's floating on a stock exchange, and it's and it's valued at over at cl close to fifty million. So it's an industry that's bigger than than music and film combined. Uh, so we've had to, you know, in that time, look at other areas outside of sport, outside of traditional live sport, and look at where how we can deploy deploy our capabilities to make sure that we can that we can. <clears throat> meet the demands of our our clients because we don't know when when well sports coming back but um but in terms of live events and in terms of having 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 fans in the stadiums we don't know when that's you know when when that's going to happen so and uh, and misha in your view of those sort of novelties that um came with the covid what do you think are the things that are here to stay I mean, we we have um, we had cycling uh, doing some innovative things with the Swift bikes and of course Formula One um, and others also um, Formula E doing some sort of E Grand Prix uh, when they couldn't have races and I think many other things as as you pointed out. What of those you think are here to stay and what are just came to to fill in that space and will 
maybe not remain here. Uh, no, look, I think the I think the the virtual, you know, these kind of virtual events, even when even when uh, when real events come come back, I think they'll stay because it's you know what what what's what's happening now is that we're seeing this sort of this acceleration of of uh, of technology. You know, technology is enabling uh, you know enabling this connection that used to only exist in the you know in the real world, right? So. But I think, I think going forward, you, yes, you'll be able to be at go to Formula One race, but you will also, uh, you will also be able to experience it in other ways. Um, and a lot of people are would prefer, particularly younger audience would prefer to experience it in a different way, in a more you know in a more game gamified sort of a virtual you know virtual environment. So I think a lot of uh, you know a lot of what we're seeing. Uh, you know, maybe maybe won't it won't exist to the same you know to this at the same at the same scale, but you know I think um, <clears throat> I think this you know what we're seeing with technology of bringing of bringing the fan closer to the you know closer to the teams and the and and uh, and the games and the and the athletes that they follow that will stay. You know, the power of the athlete will continue to rise. Because now, you know, now they they've learned how to how to in this time how to stay connected, how to use technology, how to engage. So, I think look, it's been a, it's been a really really challenging time for clearly for our industry, but I also think it's going to force a lot of us, uh, my our business included, to innovate and to move forward and to recognize that. Um, you know, the demands of consumers will evolve. The demands of advertisers will evolve. And we as businesses will have to evolve. I can't hear. Uh... Sorry, Joe, I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, yeah, go on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, sorry for that. I said that there's some uh, questions coming from sure. the audience. Happy to take them. And uh, well, so this is a, a first one that I would like to, to mention from Ricardo Pardo. How to reach a mentor? You talked about uh, you know the importance of having a mentor. How important that was uh, for you? Maybe having even more than one. So sometimes it's difficult for people to accept that role once you're not in the market yet. Sure. I mean, it depends on. Uh, I suppose. And, you, and just so you know, before, before you complete, there's a comment here from one of your <laughs> <laughs> co alumni. <laughs> sure, sure. Let, no. Let's let's reply to Ricardo here, and maybe you can talk uh, afterwards, since you know sure. him. I mean, look, I I think um, I think you just have to. You've got to put yourself out there. You've got to you've got to identify. You know who are the types of people in the industry that you really really admire, that you really would like to meet or you'd like to learn from. You know, and um, <clears throat> and look at ways in which you can connect with them. It might be maybe it's LinkedIn, maybe it's someone that you know that can make the introduction. But you've got to put your you've got to put yourself out there when you're looking to. I was I had a conversation earlier today. I have so many people who reach out on LinkedIn, for example. If you reach out to someone on LinkedIn and if you don't put a personal message, it's a complete waste of a connection. Um, you know, people like myself and others, you get hundreds of requests on LinkedIn. And I don't, if I've never met you and it's, we've not been introduced, I have no idea who you are, why you want to connect or why I should make five minutes to interact with you. But if you're really genuinely interested and you've, and you've taken the time and you then you reach out and you say, look, I've I'm I'm I've been following your career. Um, I'm very fascinated with how, what you've done here and here and here, and I'm interested to get into the industry. If you could, you know, I would really appreciate it if you could make if you could make ten minutes of your time to speak with me. I'd be grateful. Now, not everybody will respond, but if you do that enough times and you're genuinely interested, people will reciprocate. People will reciprocate. You've got it. You you just can't. Um, you can't sit back and wait for stuff to happen. You can't send generic emails out. You can't just sit there and click connect on LinkedIn with 50 people. It doesn't work like that. You really want to elevate yourself. You you want to make, uh, you want to stand out in the eyes of the person you're connecting. You've got to make it, you've, you've, you've got to hit the spot. You've got to make it somehow relevant and personal. That would be my advice. Um. 
Totally agree. I I said that before, and other people said it as well with the with the LinkedIn thing. That uh, many times I just don't really accept people that uh, you feel that's just spamming you. Yeah. Wouldn't uh, take much time just to uh, address someone's a message with their name um, in it. Even if you copy pretty much the 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 rest, it's it's okay. At least you 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 made an effort. And the other thing as well is uh, Instagram. Don't follow me on Instagram. <laughs> My personal one. Uh, I don't know why. I, I yeah. first I'm, I'm terrible at that. And today yeah. I looked. I think there was like forty requests and people that I don't really know. Follow us on I work in sport. That yeah. that's great. Um, I don't know why people would have interest to to follow me personally on 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 Instagram. But anyway, <laughs> you'd be surprised. Yeah. Um, talking about uh, formal. Edu education. Um, you did uh, the, the the FIMBA course. We we have many other people here that are studying Coventry, studied with the STS or, or FIFA Masters or 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 others. We have a, a teacher from um, a professor there at, uh, at Oregon. What's the the real benefit of um, formal education in sports when you went, want to enter the the industry? Um. A great question. I mean, look, I, I would not be where I am if I didn't have formal education to get into. Not because I, I, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not smart enough to work in 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 um, in sport, but it was it was a great it was a great entry point. It gave me the ability to uh, <clears throat> the ability to learn about different parts of the industry, because clearly there are many and there are many more now than there were then. I mean, social media didn't exist when I was doing this. It just tells you how long it's been. Um, but, you know, there's so many different areas that I was exposed to. So it gave me an opportunity to learn and know, I think I would, I would be more interested in this and perhaps less interested in that. But beyond that, and even more importantly, it's the network, it's the alumni, it's the guest speakers, it's the access that you get that you otherwise, is, I think, is very, very, very difficult. Everybody wants to work in sport. Um, there's so many people that, that reach out to me and say, I'd love a job in sport. How do I do it? Well, Formal education gives you a way, way, a, a great way of getting in, um, because as employers, we're you know we, uh, of course, all things being equal, would like to would like to hire someone who has who has uh, perhaps formal education because I know you've gone through that process, you've invested in yourself, um, but oftentimes as a, you will come you will come uh, as a referral as a, when you're when you're doing when you're doing one of these one of the many programs the great programs that are out there now so there's no shortage of them i know many of them um, and and teach for some of them and it's and and they do a great job of preparing of preparing students so i would say network and obviously getting to know different parts of the industry great uh, there's a question here specifically about one because you joined uh, the board of um, ESA now, right? The European Sponsorship Association. Yeah. And uh, where was that question? So Alina is asking you if you would recommend the diploma and if um, anyone is not familiar with it, it's the only form of qualification sponsorship in sports marketing. Uh, do you want to just give uh, people a, a bit more of an insight of what that's program is yes yes um so as a diploma is an is it is an excellent way um to really get you to really understand the the sponsorship industry in, you know in particular um the the <clears throat> the curriculum really takes you through a, a very kind of robust um um uh, i guess robust course and on, on, on different elements of sponsorship of um, you know how the industry works, and and you know whether it's valuation or or how to pitch or um, you know how to how to activate and all the basically ever from start to finish you will get you will get to understand the the ins and outs of of, of the sponsorship world. I'm not a, I'm not aware of any book or any other program um, that will give you that kind of uh, that will give you that kind of education. And I know a lot of the ESSA graduates go on and do very well in the industry. Some of them already clearly work in the industry and they do that to um, to upskill and, and clearly move in, in, into other roles. I'm a big, big proponent of 
learning. I think, um, you know, that's the way, that's the way you get ahead. That's the way that you stay motivated. That's the way that you stay sharp. So if there, if you're already in the industry and you, and you want to, you know, you want to uh, progress, understanding different elements that go into sponsorship is, is, is certainly valuable. And, and the, um, what I know of the graduates, they go on and do some amazing things. So the, the track record of the course is very, very good. Cool, cool. Um, question here from, from Bettina from Oregon. Uh, your point about competing for time is perfect. So how does technology help people make that choice? Is it ease? An app, for instance? Is it creativity? Is it uh, people on the same social media? Um, I'm not sure. So okay, can you put that up again? I just, I just want to see. Yeah, that. sorry. So um, how does technology help people? Um, help, help people make I mean, that choice. Time is of the essence, right? So yeah, you're saying yeah. That, uh, Look, I think. Yeah. Only, um, is it? I think it's it's absolute. I think creativity is 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 absolutely fundamental. Um, the most important thing is is to is you know from um if you're if you're a brand is to is to think about what you're actually bringing, you know um, what are you actually bringing to the party? That's what I always say, right? So. Don't don't interrupt people. Bring something to people. Be you know create something that they would want to tune into, something they want to engage with, something that they want to share. Um, and I think I mean creativity is, a, is 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 an umbrella for that. But you know for me it's about um, it's about doing something that's different. It's about doing something that's brave. Um, you know, it's, it needs to be, it needs to be something that I, perhaps I, I wouldn't have already seen or, um, or experienced in the past. That's the, you know, that's the kind of thing that's really gets that that's really elevated. Um, so, you know, technology and the way that it's delivered is, is, uh, you know, is a, is a separate, um, you know, is a, is a, is a separate point, but the actual content um, needs to be something that really, you know, that really grabs you. I think we've seen, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's two minutes. I've seen, I've watched content that's been five minutes and I've, and I've listened to content that's three hours. Um, it just has to, it has to be something that's really, that's, uh, that's creative and interesting and engaging and people, you know, people interact with it. Cool. Um, now talking about, um, back to, to to the career side and there's people here that would definitely be interested in what well, will be applying for jobs soon um you've hired uh, many people sort of in the past when you do that when you're evaluating so candidates what's the most important traits uh, or skills you look in someone of course they must uh, be able to do the job specifically but yeah. uh, is there a one or two uh, traits or skills that uh, you always kind of look for. Yes, yes, absolutely. Look, if I'm if I'm bringing someone in for an interview, I expect that they can do the job. So for me, that's a, you know that's a that's a given. Um, what I'm looking for is the you know is the individual, right? I'm, I want I want to see um, I want to gauge an interview if it's the kind of person that I want to come in to work with and be in their company, right? So. Um, you know, for me, I suppose it would be, it'd probably be three things. I want someone who is a great team player, um, because no matter how good you are individually, um, you can't really achieve anything un unless you can play as part of a team. Um, I want someone who is, who is hugely ambitious, uh, because I'm ambitious and I want to be around people who want to achieve. Um, so for me, uh, interviewing someone who says they want to go places and they want to do things is great because I want that kind of energy in the team. I want to, I want to be around it and I want my, my, uh, my team to be around it. Um, and I want someone who's curious. Um, I am very curious by nature and I want people to be curious. I don't, I, I don't really buy into someone who is, who is one dimensional, who um, who's not interested in in um, in learning and in, and 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 in evolving? I want people who are curious, who are asking questions, who are thinking about different ways of doing things. Because again, I, I um, I'm coming in and spending time with these people. There's a saying that you are you know you are a reflection of the five people you spend most of your time with. Now I've got more than five people in the team, but when I come in when I come in the office or when I'm on Zoom now. 
Um, I want to be around people who want to achieve, who are, who want to go places, who are driven, uh, not passengers. So that's um, you know, team player, um, ambition, ambition, curiosity, and curiosity. Great, great. Um, three super super important uh, points. Um, there are some you know questions arriving. I'll get uh, to them in a minute. Happy Thank you so much. Um, just before we go there, I just want to, there's two things that I would also like to pick your brain and, um, and I think you can share some, some good advice. I see you have a shelf full of uh, cool books uh, behind you. So you mentioned that uh, you read a lot and that's probably the ultimate source of knowledge since ever. Um, I really encourage everyone to do it. Uh, there is YouTube which is a great platform to learn as well and podcasts and all. So let's talk about all of them. So, but before we, we get to the new technology, books uh, is there for, for people, again, people sort of, let's say, starting their career. Is there one that you would recommend in particular or a few? Um, I suppose, look, there's a really good book I read many, many years ago when I started out was, um, was Mark McCormick's book, uh, What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School. Uh, you know, Mark McCormick is, you know, as some of you will know, or many of you will know, was sort of the godfather of sports marketing, is the founder of IMG. Um, and I think there are, there are a lot, there are a lot of really useful, um, a lot of useful tips in a book like that in terms of, you know, how, um, how you can get on and do well in our, in our industry. So, it's a it's a really it's a really good read. I I like um, I like different kinds of books. You know, not just sport. I'm really interested in psychology. I'm interested in culture. Um, so I in marketing. So I I sort of change things up. But you know, for example, as a you know now in the role that I'm in, I'm you know reading the Culture Code. I've read it actually a couple of times. A really really good book. Um, you know, really really interesting. Um, another one, if if people are interested in in what's going on now and our interest in the talent space, there is uh, there is this book, um, LeBron Inc. Making of a billion dollar athlete. So, you know, we're, and this is actually an area that I'm personally uh, very interested in. It's a book, it's an area, it's a subject on, on which I'm writing. So those are just a couple of, you know, those are a couple of, um, you know, a couple of suggestions, but you know, I've got, you know, I've got a bookshelves worth of stuff. So uh, yeah. Cool. No, I can those, share those, some. Yeah, those, those two are cool, and I'm actually will want to get the people that are watching involved as well. So people are reading the comments. Make this a, a community. If you guys are watching, would like to recommend books to Misha and I and everyone here, that'd be great. Yeah, write in the comments. I'll, I'll be super interested in looking at that, as well as uh, my second question. That's. Uh, are you into podcasts or are there some yeah. YouTube channels that um, you, you follow in that, um, in that area? Yes. Um, quite a few, quite a few. I'm into, into, um, into both. Um, let's see. I mean, there's for, there's a, I've recently come across a great, uh, a great YouTube channel called uh, athletic interest. And they've got some really, really interesting sort of, six seven minute videos about um you know about you know here is here, here's how to uh how a particular brand of a player was built um you know here's how um here's here's how uh nike and uh you know here's how nike became the biggest brand in the world they've got some really really interesting and very snappy videos that you can literally listen to or watch in a space of six, seven minutes. So I would, I would highly recommend that. I, I recently came across it and I really, you know, and I've, um, I've really enjoyed it. So that's a, you know, that's a YouTube channel for, for people to check out. And for podcasts, um, when I listen to podcasts, I try, you know, because I read enough in terms of the sort of reports and newsletters and all that on the sports industry, I like to, I like something that's a bit, uh, that's a bit broader than that. So I, I quite enjoy Tim Ferriss. So I right. know people are, people listen to Tim Ferriss, but um, you know, he has people from all walks of life on his podcast, a really interesting interviewer. And uh, you know, it's just, 
you learn about business, you learn about people, you learn about psychology, you learn about struggles. It's a, it's a very, um, yeah. you know, I find, I find there are some just in very, uh, very interesting conversations and, and I, t I can take away a lot of lessons and apply them to my, you know, whether it's to my work life or just to my life in general. Definitely, definitely, yeah, and know him as well, follow him as well, and uh, recommend. Um, you guys watching, if you want to share your recommendations for podcasts, book, uh, YouTube channels, feel free as well. Misha, there's a super interesting question from Alessio Pietra, who just arrived, uh, that just arrived, and I can even give you some time to think about it if you want, and then I, I go to other questions. Okay. Okay. And uh, that's probably a question that I should ask more to, and I will now. So thank you, Alessio, for, for sending that. So what's the biggest fail during your career? What, what's uh, gone wrong and why? And, and, and if you want to complete, I mean, did it bring anything good? I mean, with, with the learning and have you used uh, that in, at, to your benefit uh, later on? Yeah, no, wow, that, wow, what a great question. I'm not sure. I think... <clears throat> sometimes i look at my i look at my time at at rangers maybe as a failure um i really really wanted to work at a football club uh i i got to a point in my in my career where where i felt the time was right to go i was very excited to be there um but in the end it turned into a complete disaster i got there at, a, at the wrong time the club was going through difficulties ended up going into administration and you know before i you know before i knew it i was you know i was out of a job i mean i was literally there for maybe four months so um certainly it was i felt i was in a pretty dark place at the time because it, it it's what seemed like an incredible opportunity um to go and 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 work at a big football club to learn a lot to to have a big international role that i wanted i i ended up uh, you know, without, without a job. Uh, but I learned a lot in the process. I it was, um, you know, I think when you, when, in hindsight, you can't really, um, you can't really predict, you know, what's, what happens in the future. You, you have, you only have, um, you can only make decisions based on the, on the information available to you at any particular time. And I, you know, and that, and at that time when I made the decision, it felt right. Um, and even if it didn't work out and if I didn't have the opportunity to do what I wanted to do, um, I think if you are, you know, what I've learned is if you if you've invested in yourself and you're good at what you do, um, you will bounce back. You know, people will um, you know, people don't look at any any one moment in your career as a failure or they, they appreciate that your career is not a straight line. And it's not your career is often, you know, sort of up and down. But hopefully it's on the upward, you know, upward, um, you know, tra uh, trajectory. But certainly in my career, that was a, it was one of the most challenging moments. And I, I, I had, um, I had days at that time when I, I had no idea where to turn. But you know, a couple of months later, I was, you know, uh, I, I was on the plane to uh, São Paulo uh, working with Pele. So these things have a way of working them, uh, of working themselves out, and you just have to. You just have to believe that what got you, that's, you know, I guess class is permanent, that things will happen and you can't let any one situation uh, define you and you can't yeah. really dwell on it. You can only move forward. So that's what I've learned in that. Definitely. Definitely. And thanks again for the question. I think that was from... Yeah, uh, great. Good question. Yeah. There is um, an, another uh, one here. Amazing insights as always, Misha, um, from... Is that Sigdem? Sorry, Sigdem, as if I didn't pronounce it correctly. Yeah, what are your yeah. thoughts on the growing uh, business case for sustainable development, so social and then environmental, uh, and the role of athletes slash sponsor engagement in that space? Yeah, great question. I think this is the future. Um, you know, we um, <clears throat> we're living in the world now where you know, particularly. Um, particularly the young generation are very very vocal about the world that they want to live in so if you're if and from a you know the question is from a sponsors or from an athlete point or athlete's point of view if you have any 
desire to connect with these people, you have to um, you have to demonstrate to them that you care about the environment, you care about the planet. This is the, the um, and creating a you know creating a better world. That's what they that's what they want to see. It's not enough for companies to sell product or to compete on price or um, you know pr um, price or any or or any other. Um, or, or, or anything else for that matter. And for athletes, it's not enough just to be successful athletes and to have loads of, to have loads of followers on social media. What people are looking for is what actually drives you and what you genuinely care about. They want to see purpose. Um, and what we're seeing is that people who care, people like LeBron James and others who are using their voice as a platform to elevate others, to highlight, um, you know, to highlight issues that's, you know, perhaps go overlooked sometimes or oftentimes, um, people respond. Um, and for companies who invest in sustainability, um, you know, what they're, what they're seeing is that, is that their consumers are responding. So, you know, it, in a world where, um, you know, everything is so commoditized and people are so in and they can follow any athlete and they can buy any product, um, it's very important to show them that you care about the things that they care about and you walk the walk. So it's, cool. yeah. Definitely, I think a great, great point. Um, we're going towards the, the end of, uh, of, of the show, of the interview here. Carlos Alexandres has such a great channel, guys. All the best. I'm not sure if he's talking about us or about the channel that you recommended. I'm going to think it's he's talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, there is um, an interesting question here. It got me curious from your friend Janusz. He wants to know, can you please share a secret? How to watch <laughs> more than 25 football games during 30 days in the Russian World Cup? I'm, I'm not sure that could ever be... Um, I'm not sure that could ever be top. But yeah, I was very fortunate uh, at the at the Russian World Cup to watch you... Um, to have been there with David Dean and to have seen 26, I think we saw 26 games in total. So incredible, incredible time. Um, yeah, uh, amazing. Before, before we go, um, Misha, I saw one of your talks, also you talking about the, the role that uh, David Dean played uh, sort of as your mentor uh, as well. So I thought that was quite inspiring. So maybe you can um, tell us a little about how you actually got in touch with him and what was the benefit that he brought to to your career yeah look i i don't know i don't know how how it all happened but it was actually it was very simple i mean david was a guest speaker for the on the program that i was on and i um you know i asked the question at the time i was i mean i was fascinated to obviously to be in the room maybe 20 other people 25 other people and to have someone like david dean who was one of the with the brain behind the the, <clears throat> the the Premier League and at the time was the vice chairman of Arsenal, the vice president of the Football Association. I think if if I was being if I was uh, following logic, I would have said to myself, "There's no way this guy would ever give me any time of day." But um, but as he was walking out, I you know I I followed him or I I, I stopped him at the door and I and I introduced myself and I asked him. I said thank you for coming, and I've asked him if he would be open to at some point uh, spending 15 minutes with me because I'm fascinated by by his career, and I would you know I would I would I would love an opportunity to meet him. I mean, it was that's where it all started. I mean, from there on, that relationship. And David said it would be my pleasure. He gave me he, he pulled out his business card, he wrote down his phone his his mobile number. He said call me, and we'll you know, we'll get together. So I think you know from there on I. You know, we we met and and our relationship really sort of evolved over the years. David's always given me given me time. He's given me incredible advice. He's become much more than a mentor to me. I mean, he's become you know almost family to me over the years. But what it taught me, and when we when we when we talk about seeing twenty six games of the World Cup in two thousand eighteen, when I asked when I asked him if he had fifteen minutes in two thousand and five. I had no idea that that's what was, you know, that many, many years down the road, that that's what was going to happen. And a lot of times people see that and they think they don't actually know, they don't appreciate all the years and the time, you know, the, the, the investment that you made. But that all, you know, we all start somewhere. You know, I started my sports career 
in this country. I didn't, I've never worked in sport. I didn't know anyone in sport. I had no experience. Um, you start somewhere and you start by meeting one person. You start by asking questions, right? So yeah. I think, you know, David taught me an incredible lesson many years ago. I still, you know, if I, if I could end and pass it on. And he said, he taught me the, the theory of the turtle, which means that if you don't stick your neck out, you'd never get anywhere in life. So, and that starts with just asking, you know, even just asking the question or reaching out or putting, making yourself vulnerable. That's how, that's, that's where it starts. So simple, simple as that. A simple question led to an incredible, you know, incredible relationship and many amazing opportunities. And I think anyone can really do that. That's great. That's great. Misha, I'm going to have one last question. We just uh, hit the one hour mark, but we had that uh, from in the middle. And yeah. then we're going to, you're going to choose one uh, to give uh, your book. Okay. So, Gaetan Tern, in terms of timing, would you recommend going for a master's right out of college to a university or try to get some professional experience first? I think getting some professional experience is, is, is helpful. Um, I, I, I just think you need to give yourself the opportunity to, um, to get some experience, to have, you know, to have a break, um, you know, to decide, you know, to decide what you want to do. I mean, sometimes people want know immediately what they want and they go for masters. But I find that oftentimes, at least in my experience, that people go for their masters just because they feel like it's just the thing. That's just how they need to carry on. Um, I think you you do your undergrad, you you do you do your college degree. I think you it, it's worthwhile spending a couple of years uh, getting some work experience, then getting your then getting your masters if that's what you still want to do, um, and doing that. But I think it just depends on everyone's. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't like to talk in absolutes. I mean that like it has to be like this. But for me, it was like that, and I found it really useful. Um, but um, so yeah, I suppose I would recommend a few years of, of work experience. The truth is, um, I, I suppose that many uh, masters or some that um, I work closely with are partners of uh, I work in sport actually require some work experience anyway. Yeah, exactly. They, it's always the rule. Yeah, occasionally yeah. they will get um, you know one or two people that uh, doesn't really have uh, any experience, but they normally require so. There, yeah, there because you go. it makes a big, it makes a difference, um, you know, because they want to. I know the programs want to take take people on who are, who are then much more employable, and your 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 um, the likelihood of being employed, having ha having your degree and having some work experience are higher than if it was just the degree. I think. Okay, uh, actually, we we had another a good one uh, just okay. arrived, from Guilherme Casanova. And um, you're following the work of many uh, football clubs. He asked if you can name a few clubs that actually know the fans or what are the ones that are doing the best uh, work with, uh, with fans? Um, oof, good, um, great question. I think one of the best football clubs to do that is Borussia Dortmund. Um, do an incredible job with their fans, both and very innovative club as well. Uh, both in in um, you know in 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 stadia and you know how they engage you know how they engage on um, on social media. Another club that I think is very innovative is Roma. Again, yeah. you know the the types of you know the 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 types of things that they do, the types of campaigns they run, how they how they um, how they use social media to connect with people is also very you know is 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 also very very interesting. Um, and I think in the, you know, if we're looking UK, probably Liverpool, um, they are, you know, um, very, very strong in that space. We, we know the guys at Liverpool quite well, had the opportunity to work with them as well. So I'd say probably those, those three immediately come to mind. Great. Great. Listen, uh, Misha, thank you so much. So we're going to give you a book. So do you want to, do you want to choose a, a question or do you want me just to get someone by chance um let's choose a question okay so who, who would you like to to give it to what was the question that came from the audience that uh, you preferred 
Um, I guess the, I think that let's give it to the, the question about my, about the biggest failure. Um, I think that's a great, I think that's a great question. We, we probably don't talk about that a lot. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure to, uh, you know, to come across as someone who always had a plan, always had it together, um, has it, has it, um, you know, uh, has, has always gone from strength to strength. So, you know, the reality is that it's that it doesn't happen like that. And I don't know many people for whom that's been the case, even though that's what we, we don't talk about it on LinkedIn. We don't talk about it on Instagram. Um, but, yeah. um, but it's a great question. I think it's important. It's important for us to be honest about it, to, to, to be vulnerable and to show that actually it's okay. Um, it's absolutely part of the journey. Uh, you know, athletes athletes have their ups and downs and you know we have our ups and downs so so, so that goes to alessio pietra so ma make okay. sure you, you you write his name i'm going to send that to you okay and, uh, and alessio, you look, alessio. alessio con contact Thanks for a great question send an email to info at um i work in sports or actually at uh, joao i work in sports uh dot com and then i'll send me with, with your address and everything and i'll send that to to misha uh that was great I will ask you guys if you if you enjoyed it. So let's show uh, Misha some love. You know, click that uh, like button there. Uh, as I said, we're going to be talk to, talking to Bettina, uh, professor at the Oregon University, in the coming weeks. We still need to to schedule the right dates. But if you want to be informed, you know, hit that um, subscribe and the and the bell uh, sign as well on YouTube. Thank you so much. Um, I there were some other com comments that we couldn't show. Um, but uh, thank you, thank you so much. There was even people helping each other. There was someone here that uh, asked about the recommendation that you get, gave, and um, Ricardo asked, and then Alina came and helped them. So it's great, great uh, community, the, the right. Iowa sports community. So, Misha, thanks again for for doing this. Uh, it's my pleasure. Can't can't thank you enough. No, it's Hope great. To Anything I can do to give back and, you know, to, um, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully inspire others. Always a pleasure. Hope to see you soon, man. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in.